Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist, diabetologist, and a diabetes education specialist. Today we are going to talk about are statins worth it? So I treat my patients with statins and we get to this discussion all the time. And I'm not by any means against statin or for statin. And that's why I am going to tell you how you should make a good discussion with your doctor. Now a lot of YouTube videos that you'll be watching, there will be doctors who are like, just do that, just diet you don't need any medication or they'll say oh you need the medication you know you gotta take this medication the world doesn't work that way nothing is black and white if somebody is trying to give you a picture of conspiracy theories that are out there they're like oh you're, you're supporting pharmaceutical companies you're that you're that no we swear by god that we do not harm first and our goal as doctors to help patients but sometimes you know the conflict of interest may get in the way and definitely we don't want that and then by the way just so you know statins are generic drugs it's not a moneymaker drug so if a drug is generic, that means that there are a bunch of generic companies making it. It's like not any better than producing cookies at this point. But anyways, do you really need statins? What are the benefits? What are the risks? What are we really treating here? Are we treating the LDL? Are we treating cholesterol? What are the other benefits, right? We will discuss about that. And, and then what is the treatment goal? Let's start with number one, who really needs statins? Well, statins have been shown to reduce the risk of heart attacks between 25 to 50%. Now, that depends depends on the study population, right? The higher the risk, the more risk reduction you can show. And I'll talk to you about in a minute how statins really do that. But before that, I will tell you the general guidelines that a lot of doctors will use. And you like it or not, your doctors will use these guidelines. And some of them are familiar with the newest guidelines, some of them are not. But if they're not, you can always discuss with them. So basically, statins are indicated if you're high risk. Now, what is high risk? In our previous video, we discussed about that. If you watch that video i don't know which video it was i forgot already but uh, basically if your framingham risk score is more than 10 percent by the way risk score does not include uh, the diabetes so when you have diabetes if that scoring system does not include diabetes you need to double that risk because diabetes always doubles your risk of heart attack but typically if your risk is more than some people say 7.5 some guidelines say more than 10 percent overall risk in the next 10 years of having a heart attack then statins may be worth it. Now, why are there so many people out there that are against statins, right? And they have a point, you know, they will say that people are overtreated, everybody is on statins, and there are risks associated with statins, then what is the point? You know, I can just fix my cholesterol with just uh, the diet. Now, is that the whole story, really? Well, not that easy, not that simple. The statins was interesting in that, you know, doctors will tell you I'm putting in a cholesterol medication and statins are known as a cholesterol medication. But what is interesting when they did the studies, they never actually tried to bring people's LDL down. What they did, they just put people on statins and some people's LDL came down a lot. Some people's LDL, the bad cholesterol came down a little bit, but everybody got almost the same benefit. So the question is, was LDL lowering related to the risk reduction? And risk reduction happened typically in less than two years. Now, how come that LDL put you to risk in 50 years in your blood? It took like 50 years to give you almost a heart attack, almost, you know, because we're talking about prevention here. Or you had a heart attack and now we put you on statins and you suddenly don't have a heart attack. Well, wait a minute. So that doesn't make any sense because that should take some time for your body to recover from it because you built up that cholesterol for decades. Now, the answer to that, they found that actually statins, what they do, actually they work like a cement. They will stabilize the plaque. Typically, what happens, what causes the heart attack is your arterial wall will have a plaque, like a, a little accumulation of cholesterol. And that plaque will rupture because it's unstable. Think like an earthquake happening, you know, because the earth is unstable. Sometimes it will cause an earthquake. And then that earthquake can cause a lot of damage, right? And the body is trying to heal that damage by adding more platelets. Now that can be a little too much because your coronary arteries are very tiny. So that clotting, if you already have underlying thrombus, we call it atherosclerosis, that will lead to a sudden heart attack. You know, that's why you can go from 20% of clog to 100% 
within minutes. That's how heart attack happens. Now, statins have been shown to actually prevent that damage from happening to begin with, and in some cases actually has been shown to reverse that plaque formation. So what does that tell you? If you don't have any plaque, the statins will not do anything. So as a result, you know, sometimes doctors will order coronary artery calcium score because calcium will typically accumulate in those plaques. So if your calcium score is low, then you don't have any plaque to deal with. So you're not really reducing any risk. So it's not necessarily statins. Yes, they're helping to prevent the accumulation, but to get benefit from statins just by preventing uh, the LDL from accumulating on your arterial wall, it may take decades for you to get benefit, but you get benefit immediately if you are high risk. So I hope you understand the difference here. Yes, if your LDL is high overall, you know, most of your life, you will have a problem in your arteries because that small accumulation will lead to a problem in decades. But statins will reduce your risk almost immediately within a few years by taking them. So they have anti-inflammatory features. They prevent the rupture of the plaque. Not always. That's why not everybody who takes statins are not guaranteed. And we never say to our patients, hey, take the statins, you'll be okay. No, we don't say that. We say that take this, eat this monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats, stay away from saturated fats as much as you can. The saturated fats do not cause the clocks. But overall, when your LDL levels are high, and that's true, excessive carbohydrates, creating a lot of VLDL and triglycerides, because the byproduct of VLDL is LDL. So as a result, you know, you want to prevent VLDL formation and that can be done by eating more polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. These are like we discussed about this, like olive oil, you know, the nuts, avocado, things like that nature. But if you eat a lot of saturated fat, you don't really have much room left for the polyunsaturated fat. Does it make sense here? Because, you know, sometimes people try to label things as bad or good. In life, almost nothing is absolutely bad bad or absolutely good. It's the ratio of how much bad and how much good you have. Same thing with total cholesterol. If you have a lot of good cholesterol with like HDL, a lot of HDL, even if your LDL is a little bit high, that may not be a big deal. Again, total cholesterol over HDL ratio, if it is less than four, you know, you're fairly good. Now, on the other hand, that is for non-diabetics. When you are diabetic, the goal is to keep the LDL below 100 because we know that as the LDL goes up, your risk of having cardiovascular disease in the long run, let's say you got diagnosed with diabetes at 45, now you're 65. It's been two decades two decades if your LDL was high, yes, it definitely caused damage on you. Now, if you don't believe LDL causes any problem, I'll give you a very simple example of a familial hyperlipidemia. The only problem they have in their lipid panel is LDL elevation. Their triglycerides are good, HDL is good, everything is good except the LDL. And their LDL is very high, like in the 250 to the 500 or more, and these people die from heart attacks in their 20s, 30s, and latest 40s. So, yes, LDL causes damage and in decades. Now, statins, as we discussed, will reduce your risk immediately, but you need to be high risk to begin with. So what is your high risk? You calculate that with your doctor. You know, if your overall risk is more than 10 to 20%, definitely I would suggest taking statins. If you have elevated C-reactive protein, which is inflammation, if you have inflammation in your body, you may have inflammation from other diseases, like you may have lupus, you may have rheumatoid arthritis, you may have other inflammatory disorders, you may have chronic kidney disease. Those are the diseases that create inflammation in your system. And when you have inflammation in your system, even if you don't have any insulin resistance or any other factors, you will still be prone to have cardiovascular disease. That's why a lot of patients with lupus end up with cardiovascular disease. So we are trying to target their LDL because they're typically diagnosed when they're younger. And in decades, they can end up with, even, even if we treat their lupus well, they may still have a heart problem. So inflammation is a big factor. Uh, if you're C-reactive protein, sometimes they check ultra-sensitive CRP. If it is high, that's another reason. The Jupiter trial, for example, looked at people as a primary prevention, and they, the only thing they looked at was the CRP level. If the CRP level was more than two, they treated these people, and even without any heart attack in the past, people who took the statins, in this case it was rosuvastatin, they had 50% less chance of heart attacks in just within two years. 
So that's impressive. Now, people will say, you know, statins are bad for you because it will cause, say, memory problems, it will cause diabetes, it will cause uh, muscle pains, and so forth. Let's go over that a little bit. Just to be honest with you, there is no clear evidence, convincing evidence, that it causes memory problems. Actually, there are some studies saying that it actually helps the memory problems because a lot of dementia can also happen from vascular causes, like your blood vessels in your brain will get clogged up, and that will definitely lead to dementia as you can imagine. Some studies show that actually it helps prevent the dementia. So there's no evidence when it comes to that. And I have like 85 years old, they're on statins, they're like super sharp. I No problem. They've been taking statins forever. Now, when it comes to the muscle pain, muscle pains can happen up to 10% of people. Typically, it happens in more susceptible people. So if you have a small frame, if you're an older female, if you drink a lot of grape a fruit juice that does that but you know there's some risk factors that some people tend to have more muscle pains than the others but most of the time it is actually in your brain <laughs> here's why the studies showed that actually when we gave placebo and told people that you're taking statins but we are actually not giving them statins it's called a placebo controlled trial and those people who took placebo 30 percent 30% came and said, I have muscle pain because of the statins you put me on. How do you explain that? Well, you can explain that by law of attraction. You know, if you think that it's going to happen to you, it will happen to you. So you just have to be positive sometimes. And if you think that that medication will help you, it'll probably help you. More than likely, it will help you. If you think that that medication is going to harm you, then it'll harm you. So that's called law of attraction. If you don't know anything about it, that's uh, something that you look into. But the bottom line is placebo effect is there and it is strong. In reality, 10% of people get some sort of muscle pain. Sometimes coenzyme Q helps and sometimes doesn't. But if you ask me if I'm a high risk for heart attacks, I'd rather have a little bit of a muscle pain than the heart pain, right? And also, another big problem with the muscle pain is doctors prescribe typically very high doses of statins and they try to bring the LDL down as much as possible. But what's interesting, when you double the cholesterol medication or statin dose, when you double the dose, you're only getting another 5% reduction in your LDL. So it's really not necessarily good for you. So sometimes what I end up doing in my practice is that, uh, you know, I never start a very high dose of statins to begin with. Because sometimes, you know, let's say you take rosuvastatin or Crest or 5 milligram. If your LDL comes down and everything looks good, what's the point of giving 40 milligrams? Because those side effects are typically related to the dose. And if you're taking a very high dose of statin, then you will probably have more chances of muscle problems. So I even have given statin medications like every other day or half of the lowest dose and it still helps you. It will still help you. Everybody metabolizes uh, statin drugs differently. There are some other medications such as gemfibrozil. There's uh, medications like some HIV medications that can increase your risk of statin-induced uh, muscle pain. So the bottom line, you can negotiate with your doctor uh, when it comes to statin dose and do not give up. If you're high risk, you know, giving up on a medication that can save your life that would be too expensive although the drug is very cheap they're like a couple of bucks nowadays in the united states come on so as i said if you are high risk i think it's worth it if you are having muscle problems you can switch statins you can reduce your dose you can do all sorts of tricks if your doctor doesn't know how to do it ask for a referral again i'm not saying that these drugs are golden drugs and we never say these drugs are the only way and there are some other classes coming in nowadays like we have for example patients who are using PCSK9 inhibitors that are great when you have statin intolerance. They also reduce your LDL quite a bit. And remember, LDL is not necessarily just what you eat or drink. It is most of the time genetically determined. Look, I'm on a very healthy diet myself, okay? And I exercise like crazy. I eat well, but my LDL does not come down. And because I'm coming from a family with heart problems. So what I have to do, I have to do something about it. So I'm taking a very low dose of statin medication to to help prevent the heart disease because I'm almost 40, you know, before you know it, it's going to be 50. I don't want to end up with that problem in my 50s. Although that's my personal choice, not that I necessarily need statin, but based on my own research and evidence, I think that I should be on statin because I think LDL of 190 is a little too excessive. But if you're diabetic, try to keep your LDL below 100. But LDL is not the only problem as you know by now, the HDL has to be up 
If you're a male, it has to be more than 40. If you're a female, it has to be more than 50. The higher, the better, because of the scotch. So the ratio of total cholesterol over HDL is important, but your LDL cholesterol is important as well. Now, also, uh, a lot of doctors will freak out if your uh, liver enzymes go up a little bit. That is not a big problem, and here's why. Everything goes to your liver, okay? So alcohol can increase your uh, liver enzymes a little bit. You know, even the foods and stuff that you eat a little increase your liver enzymes a little bit. What is interesting that statins even have been studied on people who have cirrhosis, people who have chronic liver disease. It's not a contraindication uh, in most cases. So I would suggest that if you have a high risk for heart attacks or if the statins causes a liver, liver enzyme elevation, which is very common, there is no reason, unless it's more than three times elevated, the levels, there's no reason to stop the medication. Also, if you have a fatty liver disease, which is very common in insulin resistance, those people, you know, we tell them to diet and exercise and sometimes they just don't listen. And, you know, what can you do? We still have to protect them. We have to still do something for them. And they're typically high risk patients for cardiovascular disease as well. Now, their enzymes can be a little elevated from fatty liver, but that's again not a contraindication to start a statin therapy. As long as it's monitored, there is very little chance from a significant liver damage from statin. That's like super, super, super rare.